Hey everyone, and welcome back to What's the Plan, the podcast where we dive into the matters of our careers in the architecture and urban planning field. I'm Haley. I'm Andrea. So Haley, what's the plan today? This week's plan is all about updates. Yeah, so a long time no podcast. Yes. Yeah. So although the episode we're recording right now mm-hmm. isn't the first episode that we released post-break, it's the first episode that we're recording together fo- uh, post-break. Yeah. And also, if our watch, if our watchers, if our audience is watching, they can tell that it's also our first recording um, being back together in person, mm-hmm. which is very different. Mm-hmm. It's... It's been so long. I remember the last time you recorded in person. So, like, if there are little hiccups, like, don't mind it. <laughs> yeah, but with the hiccups, I still think this might, like, probably be better than the the ones we do virtually because mm-hmm. the timing for those are just a little bit off all the time. Yeah. So hopefully this will be the start to getting better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Getting back to, I guess, normal. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That being said, we thought it'd be best to kind of ease not only our audience, but ourselves back mm-hmm. into the swing of things. Mm-hmm. And um, with a bit of an update episode, because it's been a while since we've, like, talked yeah. about anything related to orchestra and planning. Mm-hmm. And um, there's been a lot of updates since, like, July, but also more so since January about all mm-hmm. the things we've talked about in the past. Yeah. So from, like, the TDC expansions to homelessness in Toronto, we're going to cover mm-hmm. both of those things. Mm-hmm. Okay, so first up, we have TT expansions, and of the three TTC expansions, we have a major update for, I guess, the Young North Suspe- uh, Subway extension. Mm-hmm. So if you recall, last time we talked, there was um, three different options that um, both the province and Metrolinx have been proposing in order to save money, because right. they are way over budget. Mm-hmm. So there was like the option one of kind of keeping things as is, there was mm-hmm. option two of um, actually getting rid of a lot of stations. So from okay. going from the initial planned six stations to four stations. Mm-hmm. And at that time of recording, we didn't know how which stations would they, would, they would remove mm-hmm. and which ones they would keep, mm-hmm. um, except for like the major ones. And then the third update was, or a third option actually was, they wanted to veer off Young Street and go towards an existing like railway track mm-hmm. um, just to save money as well. And that there was a lot of major upset there because... A lot of residents who had actually been hoping that like the subway line would stick to Young Street learned mm-hmm. that the subway would then curve into their neighborhood and they were mm-hmm. quite upset. So from there, those are, there are two major updates regarding that. Okay. So the first one is they have finally selected the fourth and final station. Okay. Yeah, and that would be um, Clark on Clark Station. And the reason why they chose Clark is that like based on the analysis conducted by Metrolinx, mm-hmm. um, they says that this plan station at Clark Avenue would offer the most benefits mm. with the least cost and least complexity of construction um, compared to the other two stations that were considered. And also, um, they think this is st- strategically superior because based on the location of Clark, mm-hmm. it's much more in the middle between the, the two stations that were removed. Therefore, mm-hmm. there are a lot more people able to like access that station. Okay. So like... Even though they're removing two stations, they think this one station will provide, like, I guess, the balance of people they will lose because right. there's the most population of living around this intersection. Right. So they also think it's, like, a good midpoint between the two that they took away? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, as well, Clark Station is near a major growth center. Mm-hmm. So it's right by the Promenade Center, which is, oh, like, there's malls, okay. there's yeah. office buildings. And also it's right by, like, the Bathurst and, like... Uh, Central Avenue corridor. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people already in that area. Mm-hmm. So that's why. Um, however, although this analysis like tells them that they will be saving money, mm-hmm. they're not actually saving that much money. Okay. Um, so the analysis suggests that even though the station will cost um, $250 million to build, right? Um, it only provide about $0.60 cents worth of savings on every dollar wonderful <laughs> so like they're only saving like about like half amount or a little bit like mm-hmm. not even half actually a little less than quarter so mm-hmm. it's like it's not that much saving but then mm-hmm. day, i guess it's like every saving counts wow, especially okay. when you're talking about like millions of dollars yeah okay mm-hmm. and um as for the decision to veer off young street mm-hmm. and um 
when they're approaching the terminus, a lot of uh, Thornhill residents are still upset by option three. Mm -hmm. And um, at this time, there are no updates as to whether or not that is still happening or what uh, Matrilling's plans to do in order to kind of, like, coax or ease the residents. Mm -hmm. However, um, with, like, the federal election going on, there's a lot of um, MPs that are kind of proposing, saying, like, if you were to elect me, I will help, like, stop or, like, help, like... um, release or alleviate your fears of, like, mm-hmm. Norse destruction or, like, um, just your homes being collapsed <laughs> or ruined because of the mm-hmm. the vibrations of the train. So, yeah, there's still no, like, major updates on it, but many are hoping in the future announcements that um, one of them would be realigning back to Young Street. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um. So I guess it's similar to, like, updates with the Scarborough line. Mm-hmm. Um, there aren't really any major updates nothing too big um i guess since we've last discussed Mm -hmm. um the scarborough line project um metrolinx and infrastructure ontario have uh decided on which company to give the construction project to which is pretty like Mm -hmm. i mean yeah it's a big milestone yeah exactly and in the construction business it's like a big deal to be able to work on such a big project Uh and so they decided to go with um okay i hope i'm pronouncing this right because it's a european based company okay it's called strabag and it's an austrian based company Mm -hmm. which i think is pretty dang cool because it's like it's it just shows like how big of a project it is that a um like a foreign based construction company wants to take it on but i mean i guess Business, like any business is business uh-huh. but it's still really interesting yeah. um and Can I interject on that? it's interesting yeah. that they didn't go with like the usual like, I know. construction companies of, like, i know oh, let's die exactly yeah that was interesting too uh-huh. but i guess like i mean i don't really know how it works maybe there was like some sort of bidding or no there's yeah, yeah. there's definitely a like a bidding process mm-hmm. and i guess they probably had like the lowest cost in the yeah, end yeah yeah but yeah, it's interesting to see like they haven't selected like a local company, mm-hmm. which they have done traditionally in the past with all their projects. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I don't know how well the past projects have gone by, Ooh. so let's try someone new. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, no, no hate, but you know, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, um, on June twenty third, uh, twenty twenty one, so about two months ago, one and a mm-hmm. half months ago. Uh, Metrolinx officially broke ground. Ooh. Yeah, so um, the extension of Line 2, which was the reason for taking away Line 3, which was the Scarborough line of the TTC, TTC subway, mm-hmm. um, officially started. And um, as of August, so one month ago, mm-hmm. as we're recording this, um, there are some pretty evident signs of progress, especially on the northeast corner of Shepherd and McCowan. Okay. So um, I haven't person- personally gone by that area yet, but apparently it's pretty evident in that area that something is going on and it <laughs> looks like it's going according to plan. Okay. So that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, as of now, Line 3 is still currently running, of course, with the exception of closures every now and then. Mm-hmm. But that's expected with the subway system. Yeah. Um, But as I was looking at updates for this, I did come across the um, Engage Metrolinks page, which is the page that they set up for updates, um, any feedback, any type of conversation and engagement that like the public wants to voice their opinions on. Mm-hmm. And I came across uh, the frequently asked se- uh, questions okay. section. One of the questions was, how are you going to um, make up for all of the like lost um, like service uh-huh. when you take away line three? Like, how are you going to make sure I still get to my places on time? And yeah. like, as we mentioned in... Um, episode nine when we talked about the TTC and expansions we Uh talked about the shuttle bus replacements Mm -hmm. um for when they do remove line three so we talked about how big of an issue this might be Mm -hmm. and they know it's an issue and so they adjust it in their (laughs) frequently asked questions section Mm -hmm. but the answer they gave to that 
was not was, satisfied? It was such a non-answer answer. What did they say? They were like, oh, we understand how big of... um." how big of an issue it is and how mm. important it is to get you to where you need to go. And we're keeping that in mind. So of course, it's going to be our top priority, but they didn't address how they were going to do it, what yeah. actions and steps they're going to take. Yeah. So I mean, let's just hope everything goes according to plan. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a, that answer actually made me laugh because mm. in my mind, like if you don't have a satisfying answer for that, why put that at all? Like. I guess yeah. they said just to know that, or just to acknowledge that, like, oh, we are aware this is an issue, mm-hmm. and then they haven't solved it yet, so then mm-hmm. they didn't give, a, like, specific plans or actions. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I but I just, like, <laughs> ugh, I wish they knew what they were going to do with it before they, like, took these steps to take away the transportation uh-huh. from such a large population. Yeah, it would make more sense to, like, be proactive about it exactly. than rather, like, reactive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, in terms of anything else, uh, all, any other updates, there aren't anything left as of now for mm-hmm. the Scarborough line. Okay. So, I guess compared to the other two lines, I think there is the most updates on Ontario line. Okay. And um, since the spring announcement of the Ontario line um, proposed route for an eastern portion mm-hmm. of the line running from Riverside to Leslie um, sparked a lot of concern for some community members as they were worried whether or not the path would propose um, would be like running into their backyards, causing mm-hmm. a lot of uproot for their parks and stuff like that. So as a result, um, in June, Metrolinx published a blog. Wow, okay. Yeah, a blog post addressing these concerns, and they shared a couple of renderings with um, with the public of how the line would be situated with the existing GO Transit. Mm-hmm. So based on the rendering, it um, showed that the two Ontario lines would be located right next to the train track. So Currently, there's only two train tracks on mm-hmm. that area of the line, and there's a lot of space left over mm-hmm. between, like, the train tracks and the existing Norbs barriers. Right. So what they're saying is that these Ontario line tracks would just run on the west side of the Go Corridor with one eastbound and one westbound mm-hmm. and be located almost entirely with the pro- within the current boundaries. Okay. So then they wouldn't be impacting other people's backyards or any park spaces that are backing onto the rail mm-hmm. and as a result they don't foresee any like loss of green space mm-hmm. and which was one of the major concerns and then another right. secondary one was like noise concerns mm-hmm. and then because the metro Lynx plans to use a different kind of system for the ontario line in and like different than like what the current subway system looks like mm-hmm. um they say these new like electrified rail system will be much quieter than go trains so because of that they, they're like oh you're not going to have any noise pollution because okay. you're not going to be able to hear it, but... Okay. We shall see what that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as for the other major update, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, many of you, if you're living in Toronto, you probably heard about this by now, because, like, every, every, like, major news outlet, or even just, like, your local news outlet, such as, like, La Tio, they mm-hmm. even talked about this. Um, and that is the construction of the Ontario line rules will, will result in a partial closure of uh, Queen Street in downtown Toronto. Wow. Okay, so Queen Street is, if you live in Toronto or if, like, you frequent Toronto mm-hmm. often, um, you know that Queen Street is, like, a really prominent street yeah. with businesses, um, transportation, mm-hmm. just there's a lot of traffic there, uh, mm-hmm. people traffic, foot traffic, and car traffic. And, like, TDC, uh, yeah. streetcar traffic. Yeah, so what part of Queen Street are they, um, is the partial closure going to affect, and why did they choose to do that? <laughs> Yeah, so, like, hearing that one of, like, Toronto's main artery or throwaway would be closed Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. for almost, actually, almost a decade, as they were planning to have it closed for five years. Wow, okay. um, It's quite daunting. Yeah. However, the closure isn't as, like, big or as intense as you might think. Mm -hmm. Um, So, although the Ontario line will be repurposing, like, one of the long abandoned, like, lower Queen stations, Mm -hmm. there's actually another subway station located under the current Queen station on the Young Line. Mm-hmm. Um... Using that station will actually minimize a lot of construction work. Mm-hmm. However, a lot of work is still required as they need to, like, build a whole new station under the existing line one for, like, users to use. Because mm-hmm. currently it's now is just, like, a pass. Like, a, it's mostly for the trains to kind of just do U-turns or whatever and stuff like that. Oh, okay. In addition, they need to connect the lower station with the upper station and then, mm-hmm. like, building pedestrian entrances and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's more so, like, building a public realm for that station mm. requires uh, closure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that being said, like all vehicles, including streetcars, 
will be diverted off Queen Street from just east of Bay. Okay. Bay Street. Yeah. To Young Street. Oh, okay. So, and, like, a relatively small section. Yeah, that's only a part of it, though. Oh, okay. There's, like, two major parts. So, like, they're closing from East of Bay to Young Street, and mm-hmm. then from Young Street to Victoria, which is only, like, the block away. Okay. Yeah. So, so the whole closure, like, you'll still be able to use Young Street and go up and down, like, going north and south. Mm-hmm. But just between, uh, on either sides of Young Street, it'll just be closed off for mm-hmm. people. And the reason why... Um, they decided to do a, uh, a full closure versus mm-hmm. a partial closure is that uh, they think that diverting all traffic for a set period of time mm-hmm. means construction can be uh, completed a lot sooner. And they're predicting that mm. a full closure would pro- uh, would mean like a whole year of construction time like saved okay. versus like a partial one. Okay. Yeah. So then it would take like five years. So they're planning to start this in like 2023 okay. and then in 2027. So about like four or five years. Okay. But if it was like a partial closure only, they're it would probably go into like 20, uh, 2030. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, I think because of that, it would be a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And as well, like, because it's like a full closure, then you know, for like the next five years, you cannot access these streets and you cannot mm-hmm. go that way. So it makes, mm-hmm. it makes it a lot, a lot easier for people that flew from the area to know like, okay, this is the alternate route I have to take mm-hmm. versus like having partial closures to be like one day you can use the street, but one day you oh, cannot. So yeah. it's like, yeah. It's hard for your scheduling yeah. because you're like, you have to check to see like, oh, is it open today? Is it not? Mm-hmm. Can I walk through Queen or not? Mm-hmm. So yeah. is the closure um, only for like traffic traffic or is it for foot traffic as well? No. So it's for also pedestrians as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, so it's, it's fully off limits. Fully off limits for everybody. Mm-hmm. So okay. yeah. And yeah, a full diversion like this, of, like it gets more predictability. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so... I actually found a lot of this information through their uh, Twitter. Oh, so okay. I don't know if you know, like in con- uh, in conjunction, I guess, with the engagement page, because mm-hmm. I didn't realize they had that. Mm-hmm. Um, they have actually a Twitter page or a Twitter site dedicated to each of these like new mm-hmm. expansion projects. Mm-hmm. So if um, if you're interested in figuring out like oh more details where this closure is, or like mm-hmm. you have any concerns, especially if you're a business, yeah, that located on Queen Street, um, they have a Twitter page you can interact with, and mm. um, they. They'll be holding, like, public consultations about the actual specific closure of Queen Street. Right. That way, like, if you do have any, like, possible concerns, like, if you own a shop there, mm-hmm. you can tell them, like, hey, like, what am I supposed to do if oh. you block off this road? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, like, luckily, like, currently we're, like, young and young to Bay and, mm-hmm. like, uh, I guess young to Victoria. Mm-hmm. It's mostly, like, I guess, uh, major stores such as, like, the Bay, Saks. Right. So, like, big box stores. Who yeah, big box stores. And, like, on the other side is, like, mostly, like, food, like, mm-hmm. Starbucks, Tim Hortons or whatever. So, it's, okay. like... Okay, big chain companies. But yeah. So, yeah. it's, like, I guess, like, the impact to small businesses is minimal versus, like, large large corp- uh, corporations. Mm-hmm. So, it's, like, if you are one of the small businesses there, like, you do have the ability to say something, but I don't think, overall, it's going to impact business all too much. Okay. That's good to hear. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all the updates for TVC. Okay, um, so as you mentioned, uh, you, we can find updates on Twitter, mm-hmm. but as um, I mentioned earlier, and surprisingly you didn't know this, but I guess that means a lot of our listeners wouldn't know this either. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are listening and you do want updates um, on these projects, you can check out the Twitter page mm-hmm. and the um, Engage page where you can sign up to receive uh, any sort of newsletters mm-hmm. and reports, posts about updates, mm-hmm. um, and we'll have those linked for yeah. We'll have them for you. Yeah, down below in the description box yeah. or like the uh, episode information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now updates on episode twelve, mm-hmm. uh, which was when we addressed homelessness. Um, so in episode twelve, uh, we addressed homelessness specifically within Toronto. Mm-hmm. And um, in the Toronto context, one Toronto carpenter actually took it upon himself to help provide shelters for those who are suffering from homelessness. Mm -hmm. And in fall of 2020, uh, Khalil C. Wright Mm -hmm. started his practice of creating tiny home home shelters Mm -hmm. for the most vulnerable across the city. Since the conception of his idea... Um, there has been a GoFundMe page to help crowdsource funds mm-hmm. for the materials um, and labor needed to go into building these shelters. Mm-hmm. And along with that, there's been an Instagram account created, Toronto Tiny Shelters, to provide updates on his progress. Mm-hmm. So 
Andrea, have you? I'm I'm sure you've heard of Toronto Tiny Shelters. Yeah, so I yeah, I first heard about it on the news because mm-hmm. the, he was actually getting sued by the city for yes. doing something, and that's yeah. like the first time I kind of heard about him. Mm-hmm. And I think I recall like you wanting to talk about it and like actually interviewing them mm-hmm. to discuss their work. However, that didn't work out. Yeah, we actually um, tried to reach out to uh, Khalil, mm-hmm. but of course, what he's doing is so such. A wonderful thing that he's just been so tied up. I'm assuming. I hope that's not why he ignored our message. Yeah. Um. And of course, with the injunction that the city actually filed against him, mm-hmm. um, he's been tied up. We assume with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um. Now we know that these tiny shelters aren't viable for, uh, aren't a viable permanent solution for mm-hmm. homelessness. But for the time being, I think that they're incredibly helpful. Um. And, of course, the city of Toronto didn't think so. They didn't <laughs> agree. Yeah. Um, and so not only was the city not doing anything on their accord to help uh, mediate, oh, help alleviate the symptoms of homelessness mm-hmm. um, and help provide shelters, but they actually also didn't seem to like that people like Khalil were taking actions into Mm -hmm. their own hands and providing shelter. Mm -hmm. And so like we mentioned earlier, um, there has been a lot of news going around about the city filing an injunction Mm -hmm. against specifically Khalil Seavright, Mm -hmm. which means that he uh, is no longer allowed to build or move these tiny shelters across Mm -hmm. the city, which means that the shelters that he was providing for such a large population Mm -hmm. has to stop immediately. And that's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. Does that also mean like the removal of existing ones as well? I don't know for sure, but Mm -hmm. I would think so. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess according to if he, I mean, I guess it would um, depend on whether or not he had any permits or if he went about, uh, creating these and having them built in areas where he i don't know like applied for them Mm -hmm. um but i hope it doesn't mean that these shelters that were already providing people a safe place to live Mm -hmm. um are taken away because that would that would be so heartbreaking yeah especially as we're like approaching the cooler months it's like the one benefit of these tiny shelters that he was making was that they were actually insulated Mm -hmm. so they could keep people warm or keep people cool away from the heat versus like a tent Mm -hmm. and the cool thing about it is that they actually have fire uh what's it called the fire alarms yeah they were installed in there Mm. so like not only is it like a nicer place to live than just in tents Mm -hmm. but it seemed like a pretty decent in between Mm -hmm. yeah so actually on august 28th uh 2021 Mm -hmm. so today is like the first week of first or second first so on august 28th (laughs) 2021 which is about like a week or two ago Mm -hmm. um khalil sevright released a seat released a statement Mm -hmm. saying that he actually settled with the city of toronto to stop uh toronto tiny shelters Um, from creating any more shelters for the homeless. Mm -hmm. Um, But he also stated that he has been in conversation with the city in an attempt to secure permanent housing for encampment residents who want and need it. Mm -hmm. Um, So the GoFundMe has been taken down, so we can no longer donate or provide our support through that. Mm -hmm. Um, However, the Instagram account is still running, Mm -hmm. and... um, I guess we'll hear any further updates from there. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see. So, as for encampments, mm-hmm. there has been a lot of upsetting updates. Okay, let's hear Following it. the initial up, uh, introduction. Mm-hmm. So, not long ago, we were talking about like the clearing at Lamport Stadium back mm-hmm. in May. Yeah. And not even, I guess, a month after that, the city of Toronto... <laughs> Followed up with the same tactic at Trinity Bellwoods. So (laughs) for those who don't live in Toronto, Trinity Bellwoods is probably one of the biggest green space we have in the middle of the downtown core. Mm -hmm. There's a dog park there. There are tennis courts, baseball, diamonds. There's it's one massive park for a lot of people to 
like used throughout the day and throughout mm-hmm. the night. And there's also a lot of people that like to go picnic there with their friends. So it's right. a popular hotspot. And as well, it's also because there's a lot of green space and a lot of tree coverage is mm-hmm. also a popular spot for um, encampment residents mm-hmm. because they're still like pretty close to a lot of like their or access their needs, such as like food, water, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so on t- June 22nd, a okay. massive operation was launched to clear out the homeless in this tiny portion of this park. Um, and like prior to actually moving forward with this operation, they once again sent out notices saying that if you don't leave by this date, you're going to get fined. Mm-hmm. And if you don't leave and we like come the day of, you're going to get arrested, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so this massive operation once again included like police drones, helicopters. This time they included high metal fencing to kind of fence off the area where the encampments were. Okay. So basically preventing people that like were supporting or uh, protesters from stopping the city to kind of enter the encampments Mm -hmm. as well as journalists. So what does that mean? Does that mean the residents within um, the fenced in areas can't leave either? Or are they like forcing them out of the So yeah, they were like putting up fence to basically like, we're going to lock you in if you don't get out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, so the, yeah, the plan was like, if you don't, leave, they're basically trying to force you to leave oh, okay. by putting up the fencing. Right. So like, they're like, if you don't, if you don't leave with them, like once we're done putting up all the fencing, like we mm-hmm. were, go- we're going to like, I think arrest you mm-hmm. because you're now trespassing mm-hmm. on city property because okay. the park is owned by them. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So like they use high metal fencing and dozens of police officers. Mm-hmm. And I guess the one difference this time is that they hired corporate security. Okay. So, like, typically when you go to, like, apartment buildings or, like, a lot of, like, major, I guess, office buildings, mm-hmm. there's security at the bottom. And they're yep. usually, like, ran by an external company that does mm-hmm. security. So, what they did is that, like, rather than using, I guess, I guess dozens of cops, the city of Toronto hired an external company okay. to come and, like, secure the metal fencing. So as they were putting up the metal fencing, they had people, like, stand in front of them to make mm-hmm. sure people don't climb over them mm-hmm. to get into to stand there to protest right and at the same time they don't let people i guess like get it out by climbing Mm -hmm. so like to prevent people from going to the camden area do they have a reason for hiring um a third party um i'm not sure but like they all came up with the like they all showed up with wearing a uniform saying their company you know Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so people were just like what what yeah they're confused like people that were there to uh protest Mm -hmm. and like yeah if you thought like the enforcement at lamport was really bad Mm where like pushing shoving uh, unrest happened um the the situation at trinity bellwoods like was almost like a full-blown military mission it was like done very like like precisely and like lots of people like basically they had so much people like overwhelming the encampments that's like you really had no no like no chance of like helping them wow okay and um and like the main reason once again for putting out this action is like they want to make the park safe they want to give this the space back to people they want Mm -hmm. to move people into more i guess semi-permanent housing Mm -hmm. but like as we all know like a lot of times these although they say this like it isn't actually true Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um as of now it's been two months or three months since this uh eviction happened yeah and the high mental the high metal fencings are still mm-hmm. up. The corporate security is still there monitoring. Making, For what reason? <laughs> making sure like encampment residents don't try to go back. Okay. And settle them settle there again. Okay. Yeah. So it's really bad. And mm-hmm. the worst part is that like because this is the second time this kind of like eviction has happened, um, a lot of people have lost lost faith in the city and mm-hmm. doing right by encampment residents. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, um, there are a lot of issues with, like, I guess, the city and journalists. Mm-hmm. So typically when these incidents happen, journalists, they wear their media passes. They're allowed to go anywhere they want. They're allowed to photograph. They're allowed to take notes and, like, do, videograph, like, the mm-hmm. whole incident. Right. But um, for, I, I don't know, like, maybe the police weren't aware or, like, they weren't really thinking, they actually arrested several journalists from doing their jobs. Therefore, in, like, infringing on the freedom of speech yeah. of journalists. Yeah. So there was a whole, like, uproar with that as well. Mm-hmm. So because of Trinity Novello, it's like, you would hope the city learned from them. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, they did not. Is there another incident? Yeah. So, like, a month after that, on July 20th, okay. um, just like Lampert Stadium and just like Trinity Bellwoods, mm-hmm. 
the same and same major eviction happened at Alexander Park. Okay. <laughs> which is a much smaller park uh-huh. and and like the same level of enforcement, the mm-hmm. same level of violence resulting or uh, resulting in protesters yeah. being arrested or being like bloodied, and the same level of blockage and arresting of journalists as well from mm-hmm. reporting the incident. And like because this is the third act, like this just even further is more like this the people's distrust in the city of yeah. actually doing anything. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And, like, once again, like, it shows you that you cannot really fully rely on the city to do everything on mm-hmm. their own. Mm-hmm. And, um, or even, like, you can't even trust that they would do right by, like, the general population as a whole. Mm-hmm. And at this time of this recording, we are currently in, um, Canada is currently in a federal election. That's and a correct. hot debate is housing. Yeah. <sighs> And, like, despite a lot of the parties uh, expressing their support for affordable housing, Mm -hmm. um, many of their plans are too small. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know if you looked at their platforms yet or not, but most of them are mainly focused on, like, first-time home buyers rather than Mm -hmm. renters. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're either that – they're focusing on, like, money incentive programs to, Mm -hmm. like, put money in people's pocket to buy a house or Mm -hmm. to get a house rather Mm -hmm. than actually addressing the supply issue. Mm -hmm. So it's, like – and if you've listened to our previous episodes, we address why these are issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go back to, I think, episode... 11? No, 11? 10, 11, or 12. Yes, our whole, like, housing series. I've yes. actually made a playlist on YouTube for it. Wonderful. So if you Wonderful. go to our YouTube channel, there's a playlist called, like, housing. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like, rather than focusing on the actual issues and just, like, giving out money to solve the problem... Um, mm-hmm. This problem will continue to worsen if the federal, the provincial, and the municipal government um, continues to do basically nothing. Mm-hmm. So, like, because this episode will be coming out after the election, yeah. we hope you voted wisely if you could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so important that you choose not to get, like, too political, but, like, I mean, human rights is inherently political, mm-hmm. which is really sad that it's come to this. But we just hope that you, I don't know, like, you understand how privileged Mm -hmm. we are that um, we can voice our opinions and Mm -hmm. we have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, housing is a human right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the next episode or two, we'll have the results no will we have the results that quickly for? yeah we do you yeah. get the night off okay night cool off. so we'll see what happens and we hope that whoever we whoever we elect as our next leader has good ideas that mm-hmm. they can stand by and are actually viable mm-hmm. yeah maybe we'll have a third update on actual like planning policies that will yeah. actually help homeless yeah that'd be really cool Mm -hmm. so as for other updates Mm -hmm. we do have a couple things coming down the pipeline Mm -hmm. but um we're gonna hold off on talking about that for now so stick around for them Mm -hmm. and yeah so updating you guys was the plan for now Mm -hmm. listen to our next episode to continue figuring it out with us yeah thanks for following along to this episode if you liked it please give us a like uh, review and subscribe for more. Until then, follow us on Instagram at What's the Plan Podcast for what the next plan is.